The first noble truth of Buddhism is that life is suffering. Of the four noble truths, the first one is that life is suffering. Uh, but in reality, it's simply saying, acknowledging the fact that life as a human by its very nature will involve suffering because we will all experience loss and we will all experience pain because of loss and things that we can't hold on to. And that is, uh, that does cause suffering. And when I work with people for many years now, 10 years of experience of doing posture restoration, of course, my own personal experiences, which inform my overall understanding of posture restoration and pain, I, I think a lot of people, I see them, whether in person or online, and it seems like sometimes their symptoms are way beyond what they should be from the testing that their body is showing. And at those times, I think that a lot of people need to look inside. <laughs> they need to go, they need to do a deep dive inside their own brain, inside their own psychology, and figure out whether their painful suffering, the pain that they're experiencing, which is true pain, they're not making it up, but maybe that pain has a little bit more to do with the circumstances of their own life than what their physical body is doing or not doing. Now, I remember my, the one thing I learned from high school football was when my coach said that uh, your body doesn't hurt as much when you win, and that's absolutely true. When you lose, ah, everything hurts. <laughs> but when you win, you know, your arm could be falling off and you basically don't even recognize it. Because you're just, now you could say that's, you know, that's a neurochemistry issue, endorphins, and you could say that. But the reality is when you look at it, when life is going well, you're less likely to feel pain. And when you look at studies, or the pain that you have doesn't bother you as much, let's put it that way. And so when, we're, when life isn't going as well, all the pain in our body is magnified, completely magnified. And if you look at studies about depression and chronic pain, you often find them that, that they go hand in hand. And I've experienced plenty of both in my earlier years, my teenage years, and then my early 20s when my body was completely falling apart. But of course, my body was completely falling apart at a very young age. And so what I've had to do, which I'm gonna, and I'm gonna explain that, but what I've had to do is re-inhabit my body, but not only re-inhabit my body, I've had to re-inhabit my life and take control of my own life and direct my energy Posture restoration is not biomechanics, in my opinion. It's energy work. When I'm working with someone, I'm trying to get their energy flowing again. I can do that with their body because I know typically where their body's gonna get stuck. But I can't get someone moving forward in life and they're not gonna tell me because they're not usually thinking about, oh, my issues at home are causing the tension in my body to increase and that's causing the pain in my body. But all we're doing is releasing tension and getting that energy moving again. So what people need to start to think about is what is it in the circumstances of my own life that are keeping me stuck? Am I moving forward? I'm not even saying you have to have goals, but are you doing something to move forward? If not, your energy is stuck. You could say that the, the only reason that the brain is necessary is to control complex movement. And there's books written about that, that the brain and that the human mind is the internalization of movement. So psychologically, it's very important to move forward in life. If you're not going anywhere in your life or you feel like you're wasting your life or you're just not enjoying it, tension levels are going up inside your body. You've got to get moving. So now I'm going to show uh, some pictures of myself. So this picture, you can see I'm in a completely forward head posture. That is not, that is a physical issue because I'm already an extension. How do I know that I'm actually an extension? Well, when I was young, I could not touch my toes. I couldn't do a standing toe touch, which means my hamstrings were way too tight, my back was way too tight. Even when I was, I remember as a kid, I, could, I couldn't touch my toes until I was 40, okay? I could also, I was not able to sit with my legs out in front of me in a long seated position. So my, my, I was tight and now I can with no problem. So as a little kid in elementary school, I couldn't sit like little kids sat. I'd had too much back pain. So I was already inhibited. Now, was that a psychological issue? I don't think so. I, I wasn't abused. There was, there was no issues that I remember at home. I had pretty normal parents. But, but if you look at this picture of my face as a youngster, you can see that my head on the right side is already down. And my left eye is higher, my right eye is lower, and my left ear is higher, and my right ear is lower. So my head is like this at a very young age. 
Now, what that means is, if you're looking from the, from the spine, that uh, I'll go from this direction, this means that the right, uh, the right atlas and, and the right occiput are going, actually, no, the right occiput's going down as the right uh, atlas is going up. And it's creating compression through the back of this right side, right back through here. And I stayed like that for 40 something years. And in reality, I just kind of got it finally in the right position. My head actually moved up. But I had to re inhabit my body. Now, again, what, what was the origin of that? I don't think it was psychological. I think it was a, a, a visual issue. My optometrist, my, the neurological optometrist, thought or believes that at a very young age, my brain stopped using my left eye. If that happens, your brain is going to feel threatened and it's going to tighten up through the right TMCC pattern. That's what your right TMCC pattern will do. It will support you in times of stress. And once you're in that position and your brain is, feels threatened because you're not seeing visual space properly, your face cannot, will not develop normally and the muscles in your body will all be tight through the right side. So here I am throwing pitch, I'm pitching, playing basketball, football, running, doing everything in life with a body over on that right side. That tension level is going to go up. Now that makes me think about the fact that people who have chronic pain may or have nervous systems that are way overactive. They react to things that they shouldn't react to. Now, when I experienced emotional pain, did, was the emotional pain so much stronger because my physical body was already on a high sense of alert? Did, was I too touchy? Was I too sensitive because my body was already threatened? It's possible. And then when you feel those things, you become, uh, you, you, you don't know how to deal with them because you're so young. Well, that can lead to depression very quickly. And in fact, it did. So in my teenage years, yeah, I had a lot of depression. And that lasted up through my college years and then even into my early 20s when my body really started to fall apart. But at the same time, I realized my body started to get better when I quit my IT job and I started to, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I was taking control of my own life by starting to at least think about doing things what I wanted to actually do in life and I dropped the fear of what people would say. So I had to not only re-inhabit my, I had to take my life back. I had to develop a direction, a forward direction and not worry about what anyone else said. I had to lose the fear. And so once I did that, things actually started to get better for me. But also I had to re-inhabit my body, which I could not do without proper sensory input. And that meant vision, the splint from my mouth, because my head was twisted. And then I had to re-inhabit my, well, I had to re-inhabit my body through PRI techniques. And the technique that you're seeing here, this is a great, this was my test because I could not do this really until this year, until I finally had the splint and now a little bit of palatal expansion and things are going a lot better. So I can actually feel my hamstrings, my internal obliques on both sides and my trapezius muscles, my lower and middle traps, my scapular muscles all at once while I'm breathing. And in fact, how I got my head to finally go into this more proper position was through singing or vocalizing in that position. So if you, if I couldn't touch my toes and I could not sit upright with my legs out, I was ungrounded. That forward head posture looking down, that was an ungrounded individual. That then probably led to psychological ungrounding. They go hand in hand. So, but it can happen either way. You could become ungrounded because you're going through such stress or such life angst or anxiety, whatever it's going to be, or you know, midlife crisis, that the tension levels in your body are going up. It changes your way of breathing. So when your tension levels go up, you're going to start to neck breathe. And as you start to neck breathe, it's going to pull your chest up and your head forward, and you might end up looking like me in this picture. So it can start either way. But one way or another, a lot of people are going to have to are going to have to address both areas. They have to re-inhabit their body. They have to start to feel their body appropriately again, but that requires tension levels to go down. If my back and my neck stay overactive, you're, I wasn't going to feel my hamstrings, my abdominals, and my traps, the grounding muscles. I wouldn't feel them appropriately because there was still too much tension. The only way I could do that was through getting my visual system set, my mouth, set my jaw in the right position. All those things had to be set so the tension levels in my neck and my back could decrease enough that I, I then had access to those grounding muscles, the hamstrings, the abs, and the traps. On the other hand, I always think about what if I was still doing a job that I didn't like? What if I didn't 
enjoy my life? What if my energy was inhibited psychologically? Maybe I wasn't going anywhere or I had low self-esteem still. Would I still be able to lower my tension levels enough to feel the effects, the positive effects of the PRI techniques? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so you have to think more about, less about biomechanics and more about energy and spirit, whatever that means to you. And just remember this, the more, and this is another great saying from Buddhism, the more I, the more suffering. Just keep that in mind. If you're over-focused on I, on me, and woe is me, my life is so bad, and trust me, I understand some people's lives are bad, but a lot of people who are in pain, their lives aren't that bad. Subjectively, well, no, objectively. Subjectively, they may feel their, 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 <laughs> their lives are bad, and I can't say that they're not bad if they subjectively feel that the lives are bad. But you have to, you have to get out of I, the focus on I. You have to do things that allow you to get into flow states where you're no longer thinking about I. But if you're doing a job you hate, if you're in a relationship that you hate, if you're in a family situation that you hate, if you're living in a part of the country that you hate, if you're always angry because you watch too much political TV and you hate the Democrats, or you hate the Republicans, that's negative energy. And negative energy inhibits you and it will stop you from moving and you're gonna go nowhere with your life. And now you wanna do a PRI program and oh, these techniques don't work. Well, maybe that's not the techniques because the techniques work for me, but, and for lots of other people, as long as you have competent, uh, competent instruction and someone showing you how to do them, of course, but maybe it's you. Maybe there's bigger fish in your life that have to be fried before these techniques, these posture restoration techniques will help you re-inhabit your body. Maybe you need to re-inhabit your life.